Joyce Meyer Ministries dankt haar donateurs die deze uitzending mogelijk maakten. And I feel like somebody here and you you need to hear that because you're facing something that you know that God has asked you to do and you just keep telling God you just can't do it. <laughs> But if God has led you to do something, God will give you the grace to do it. You may not feel right now like you can do it, but when you take that first step, the waters will part. You know, when, when we get a vision from God about something that we want, something good we want to see happen in our life, uh, you get a picture from God. You get an image of how things will be. But he doesn't bother to tell you how long it's going to take to get there. Doesn't bother to tell you what the journey is going to be like or how much opposition you're going to have. He just shows you this done deal. Amen? It's, it's kind of like going out and buying a 5,000-piece jigsaw puzzle. You pick out a puzzle based on the picture on the box. You like the picture. Well, when God gives you a dream for your life, you like the picture. Sounds good to me. Let's go all over the world and preach the gospel. Sounds good. I want to own my own business. Sounds great. I want to lose 50 pounds. Sounds great. I want to get in shape. Sounds good, God. I want to get this house so organized that I know exactly where everything is at all the time. Yay, yay. I'm all for that. Are you with me? Yes, God, get the garage cleaned out. Get every closet organized. Yes, I got the picture. And then you open up the box and you see what 5,000 pieces really look like. <laughs> and all of a sudden, you want to just faint. It's like, what have I gotten myself into? Have you ever thought that? You stepped out into something and then you thought, what have I done? What have I gotten myself into? Well, you know, when you do a puzzle, you start with the edge pieces first because they're all pretty easy. So God usually in the beginning will give us some rather easy stuff to do just to kind of get us started, you know. And um, the thing that I like to make a point out of is in most puzzles, especially if it's a scenery picture, which a lot of them are, and I don't know if you've ever thought about this or not, but 60 to 70 percent of the puzzle is all blue sky and green grass. <laughs> and I can tell you, some of you right now, you are so tired of putting together blue sky. <laughs> Come on, who am I talking to today? <laughs> I mean, you're like, if I have to hunt for one more piece of green... But that's what a lot of life is. And nobody has a message to bring you that's going to change that. And they'd be lying if they said that they did. But there is a way. There is a way that you can make ordinary, everyday life extremely extraordinary. And that is when you learn how to do life with God. Now, that's the title of my message today, which is not hard, but what I'm going to share with you today was probably one of the most profound things that ever happened to me in my spiritual walk. I just realized I didn't finish the story about Mike, so I'll go back and finish it. This morning, I realized I didn't finish the story I started last night. <laughs> um, Mike became so serious as a Christian. And one night he was sound asleep and Penny woke him up and said, Mike, why, 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 why? Mike, are you ever going to make me laugh again? And he said, why, what are you, what? What are you talking about? First he didn't get it. Then about a week later his mother called him and said, Mike, are we ever going to talk about sports again? See, when he became a serious Christian, <laughs> he forgot about everything else in life except just doing something that he thought was spiritual. 
And I remember going through the same thing where I actually felt guilty just doing anything ordinary. And even when I was doing ordinary things, I didn't enjoy them. I just wanted to rush to them and get them over with so I could do something that I thought was spiritual. You know why? Because I felt, I felt that I was more pleasing to God. Come on now, you're gonna get this today. I felt that I was more pleasing to God if I was praying or studying the Bible or going to church than I could have been if I was watching TV or sweeping the floor. Do you know that lighting a candle in a church is no more sacred than lighting the candles on your two-year-old's birthday cake? If you're doing it with and for God. Now, I don't care what kind of a life you have, you're never gonna really enjoy your life because God won't let you if you try to do it apart from him. The way to bring enthusiasm into every ordinary day is to do ev to learn, learn Colossians 3, not just as a scripture, but something we put into practice in our life. Do everything in the name of Jesus, in dependence upon his person, giving praise and glory to him. Everything, everything that we do. I hope that I can convey to you in the little bit of time that I have this morning how life-changing this was for me. When I stopped dividing the sacred from the secular, and I realized that everything became sacred if I did it with and for God. Come on, you're gonna like this today. This is gonna help you. God didn't meet with Moses in a temple. He met with him at a bush. Come on, a bush. And when God showed up in the bush, the ground became holy. So everything that we do, if we do it with and for God, it becomes holy. Woo! Everything we do. You know, yes, I like looking good, but one of the reasons why I exercise and walk five miles a day, I'm doing it for God because he told me 12 years ago, if you don't start taking better care of yourself, you are not going to be strong for the last 30 year journey. And I want to finish what God has called me to do. So I know that I, in order to do what I'm doing at my age, I have to do that. And so it is something that I'm doing for God. Therefore, even though it's hard, I can actually tell you I enjoy it because I do a lot of my praying while I'm walking and I talk to God while I'm walking and we, we gotta understand that God's not stuck in a church somewhere, he's everywhere and God, now listen to this, God is never more than one thought away from you. Did you hear that? God is never more than one thought away from you. He's here all the time, but you can bring him right into your awareness just by thinking about him. We even overly spiritualize prayer. Prayer is just having a conversation with God. We don't have to become like a different person now because we're praying, oh, most holy thou. <laughs> Get out of here. God don't want to hear that. <laughs> just act like who you are. It's me again, Lord. And prayer doesn't have to be long. It doesn't have to be eloquent. When the Bible says pray without ceasing, we can actually do that. We can pray our way through the day. Thank you, Lord. I need you, Jesus. God, help me with this. You're awesome, Lord. You're wonderful. For so many years, even as a woman who loved God, he was just 
this little spiritual part of my life, he lived in a little Sunday morning box. And the rest of the week, I tried to do life on my own. And I only called on him when I had a crisis. I only called on him when I thought I was over my head. Well, you see, I, I've learned that I'm always over my head. <laughs> I mean, I am so far over my head, you have no idea how much trouble I would be in if God didn't help me. Amen. Amen. People talk about, you know, well, go deep. <laughs> well, you know what I figured out? When you're over your head, doesn't matter how deep you go because you're still dead if God don't help you. <laughs> and so, I had God in this little Sunday morning box and I didn't know any better. Nobody was teaching me any better. And back in the 70s when God really touched my life during the outpouring of the Holy Spirit that was taking place at that time, and by the way, you don't have to wait for some special outpouring. You can have more of God anytime you want to. Anybody can be as close to God as they want to. It all depends on how much time you're willing to put into it. Yes. I said, anybody can be as close to God as they want to. It all depends on how much time you're willing to put into it. Anybody can make an adjustment here today and say, from now on, God, you're going to be first in my life. You're not going to be second. You're not going to be third. You're not going to be after my job, after this, after that. You're going to be first. And I don't care what else has to be cut out. You're going to be first. God is before my ministry in my life. He's before everything else. And the more I learn that, the happier I get. Relationship with God is not supposed to be a burden. It's supposed to be a lot of fun, joyful. And, and I'll tell you something that has happened to me over the 40 years that I've been serving God. And if you're not here, I pray that something I say today will help you get there. I am just really comfortable with God. I mean, I'm just comfortable with the Lord. I don't feel like I have to pretend. I don't feel like I have to put on airs. I don't feel like I have to try to impress him. God has taught me, Joyce, I knew what I was getting when I got you. And there is nothing that you do that will shock me. Because I already knew every wrong thing you were going to do before you ever did it. I know every word in your mouth that you have not yet spoken. And I know every thought that you have not yet let drift through your mind. And I love you anyway. <laughs> Amen. And I felt like God told me a while back, I was, I was trying to change something. He said, you know, I like you just the way you are. Now, you see, you don't know what to do with that. <laughs> One man over here went. <laughs> yeah, he likes you just the way you are. I didn't say he likes all the stuff we do that's wrong, but he likes you. There is a difference. You've got to separate your who from your do. I am a child of God. I don't always do everything right, but I've got some good news for you. I'm not where I need to be, but thank God I'm not where I used to be. Yeah. Woo. And I'm going to celebrate my progress because it makes the devil mad when you celebrate. I don't know if you know it or not, but God likes a party. I mean, you go read the Old Testament. They were commanded to have parties. It was not an option. And they had long parties, week-long parties, several-day parties. I mean, they party. <laughs> and I love the story about what we call the prodigal son, but really that story is just as much, if not more so, about the elder brother. And the elder brother was a religious guy. He didn't know how to enjoy life. When the son came back, the father was so overwhelmed and so full of joy that the first thing he wanted to do was have a party. And I love this. Don't miss what I'm going to say. The elder brother refused to go in. 
He stayed outside and had a bad attitude. But you know what I noticed? That didn't keep God from throwing the party. And here's the thing I want you to know, God's got a party going on. And even if you don't want to come, there is a party going on and I've decided to go to mine. I'm going to the party. I'm going to enjoy my life. I'm going to enjoy myself. I'm going to enjoy my husband. I'm going to enjoy my kids. Jesus came that we might have and enjoy our lives and have it in abundance to the full until it overflows. Come on, if you want to make the devil mad, just get happy. Just get happy. You say, well, how can I be happy with all these problems? Well, you better learn some way to get happy with problems because you're likely to have some all your life. <laughs> Seriously. <laughs> oh, we are so stinking religious. Can't listen to a song if it's not a Christian song. <laughs> now, I don't want to get myself in trouble here today, but obviously I am in no way, shape, or form suggesting that we even begin to think that we can participate in things that are not clean or proper, but everything that we do doesn't have to have a so-called Christian label on it. Yeah, good, I got one person over here with a tiny clap. <laughs> There's a party going on. God wants us to enjoy life, but you gotta stop dividing what you think is sacred from what you think is secular and realize that all of life is to be done with and for God. And if you can't do it with and for God, then that's a clue, don't do it. Amen. Listen, I have no trouble at all knowing when to turn a television show off. That doesn't mean that sometimes I don't hang on to them a little longer than I should because I want to see the end. I know we're just like you, but I'm just saying that we know. We know right from wrong. We do not have to be afraid of liberty. We do not have to have all these legalistic rules and regulations for following God. We are led by the promptings of the Holy Spirit. I know when I need to shut my mouth because I'm gossiping and God doesn't like it. I know when I'm saying something about somebody that I shouldn't say. We know when we're doing something that's wrong. Let me just give you a few things I got on my list here. <laughs> Common things are sanctified when they're done with and for God. What does it mean when something is sanctified? Now, I don't have it here, but I got this really pretty crystal glass that we carry on the road with us for our conferences, and you know, kind of, so to speak, that glass is sanctified because that's my glass, it's for my water, and that's what we use it for. Now, we're sanctified by the Holy Ghost. We are set apart and made holy for God's use. And God uses ordinary things, common ordinary things, just like he met with Moses at that bush, but the ground the bush was on became holy because God showed up. You have to think about this for a while after you go home. Common things that becomes, can become sanctified when they're done with and for God. Grocery shopping. Household chores. Cleaning house. Ex... <laughs> Exercising, driving in traffic, going to the same job, <laughs> finding another piece of blue sky, another piece of green grass, 
<laughs> one more day. Stay in one home, more hotel, study for one more message so I can preach to one more group of people. <laughs> Come on, it doesn't matter what it is. Anybody, if you're gonna be faithful to anything, there's gonna be times in your life when you are just gonna want to rip your hair out and scream, I cannot do this one more time. And that's when you do a little turnaround and you say, God, but I will do it with and for you. Now let's talk for a minute about motive. Boy, our motives make such a big difference. Such a big difference. You know, I even look at getting, when I get dressed in the morning, I look at it like, I want to do, I don't want to look good just for the sake of looking good. I represent God. So I want things to look nice. I want my clothes to not look like they sat in the dryer all night and I just pulled them out and put them on because we represent God everywhere that we go. I mean, I see some people and I think, do you not have one mirror in your house? <laughs> what is your problem? Well, we should do our best for God because we are his representatives in the earth. So even in things like that, if we do it with and for God, it takes on a whole different thing. I remember when I learned to go to the grocery store with God, talk to God in the grocery store. Some of the most exciting times in my life was when I was young and just newly baptized in the Holy Spirit. And some of this stuff may sound silly to you, but I don't care as long as you get it. I remember when I, right after I'd been filled with the Holy Spirit and I was bowling one night and I wasn't bowling good, and God said, ask me to help you. I thought, I'm not gonna, I'm gonna pray about my bowling. <laughs> Cause see, I didn't think God cared about that. Are you here? I didn't think God cared about anything ordinary. It had to be something spiritual. And so sure enough, I prayed and I asked God to help me and I started bowling better. I remember another time when I was fixing my hair and I had one little piece of hair that I could not get to go in place and I was so mad I was ready to just beat myself in the head with a hairbrush. That's the way I used to handle stuff. And, and the Lord just depressed him hard, asked me to help you with your hair. Well, I gotta pray about my hair. See, God, listen to me, please. Don't make me come down there and get you. <laughs> Everybody listen. God cares about everything you do. And get this, he wants to be involved. He wants to go to the grocery store with you. He wants to clean the house with you. He wants to help change the oil in your car. He wants to walk with you when you cut your grass. He wants to drive with you in traffic. He wants to do blue sky with you in green grass. Are you there? I love the Amplified Bible where it says that Jesus sent the Holy Spirit to be in close fellowship with us. The Amplified uses that term several times, close fellowship with us. Jesus didn't die so we could all have a religion. <laughs> he died so we could have a personal relationship with him through, Christ, through, through him, with God, a personal relationship with God through him. And he sent the Holy Spirit. How much closer can you get than in you? God is as close to us as our breath. And we don't have to do anything without him. You know, a lot of times we focus on just a weekly trip to church, maybe a little bit of prayer each day. But really, God wants so much more than that. He wants to do life with us. He wants to be involved in everything that we do. 
And we need to know that God does care about even very ordinary things in our lives. Our hair, our trips to the grocery store, our hobbies, etc. We need to get comfortable with God. And our relationship is not designed to be a burden, it's a friendship. One of the things that really helps us in our relationship with God is to learn how good He is and that we can trust Him with anything and everything all the time. Je kindertijd. Een tijd om te dansen in de zon en te zingen in de regen. Een tijd om uitbundig te lachen en onbekommerd op avontuur te gaan. En om je vervelende broertje te plagen. Kind zijn betekent leren, groeien, geloven. Maar ook nu zijn er op de wereld heel veel kinderen die geen idee hebben van hoe je kindertijd zou moeten zijn. Ze zijn alleen bezig met overleven. Deze kleintjes moeten s'nachts vaak slapen zonder een dak boven hun hoofd. Ze hebben dorst, lijden honger en voelen zich eenzaam. Sommige van hen hebben zichzelf die dag meer malen moeten verkopen... voordat ze hun misbruikte lichaam te rusten kunnen leggen. Helaas is dit niet een verhaaltje over een handvol kinderen in een onzichtbare wereld. Nee, het is een keiharde werkelijkheid. Hier en nu, voor echte kinderen, onze kinderen... Sommigen leven bij jou om de hoek. Anderen hier vele duizenden kilometers vandaan. Maakt die afstand dat een kind minder behoefte heeft aan liefde, bescherming en verzorging? Maken geslacht, ras of omstandigheden dat een kind minder deel uitmaakt van onze menselijke familie? Nee toch? Een mens is een mens. Een nood is een nood. En een kind is een kind. Zo kostbaar in Gods ogen. In welke uithoek van de wereld een kind ook om hulp roept... wij moeten er gehoor aan geven. Op welke grond de tranen van een kind ook vallen... wij gaan erheen. We have traveled long.
genade en de hulp van al die mensen wereldwijd die ons hun steun waard vinden, zijn wij in staat om vele hulpbehoevende kinderhanden vast te pakken. Maar er zijn nog veel meer kinderen op de wereld die schreeuwen om hulp. Geeft u daar gehoor aan? Ze zijn op zoek naar een helpende hand. Helpt u ons mee om ze die te bieden? Well, have you ever wanted to help hurting people, but you feel like you can't make a difference? I want you to know that you can. When we work together, we can feed hungry children, rescue women from human trafficking, and help victims of natural disasters. Uh, that's just few of the things that we can do. And I'm asking you, if you're not a partner with our ministry, I'm asking you to partner with us, to become a financial partner with the ministry. And that means that you do something on a regular basis, monthly or, or quarterly, but we need people all over the world helping us so we can keep reaching hurting people. And honestly and truly, what each one of us can do by ourselves is minute compared to what we can do if we put it all together. And so I'm inviting you to join the family today and make an amazing difference all over the world for God's glory. You can be a world changer. Iedere dag worden we door vele stemmen, gedachten en meningen overspoeld. Hoe kunnen we erachter komen wat God ons door bepaalde levensvragen en dagelijkse uitdagingen zeggen wil? Joyce Meyer legt in dit boek uit op welke verschillende manieren God met je kan communiceren. Bestel nu hoe je Gods stem kunt horen telefonisch op 026 20 22 100 of bezoek onze website joyce-meyer.nl. Een dag begint pas goed met een goed ontbijt. En een dagelijkse overdenking van Joyce. Nieuwe impulsen en bemoedigende gedachten die je zullen sterken tijdens je dag. Abonneer je gratis op de overdenkingen op joyce-meyer.nl slash overdenking of op Facebook. Begin je dag goed. Het is het waard.